Hello everybody and welcome to your community spinning group for the month of June. Isn't time flying? I can't believe we're in June already. I hope that you really enjoyed uh, if you took part in the May um, group. That was really inspiring. I saw lots and lots of fabulous work coming through that. It was wonderful. It really keeps me motivated as well. So well done. Thank you. I'm just so pleased that you're taking part. It's wonderful. Now then, for the month of June, I was pondering what to do and I came across a bag of mohair from my Angora goats, which I had forgotten all about. I've forgotten it was even there, but it reminded me of this uh, little ball that I created. And some of you who, if you've been to the workshop, you will probably, my workshop will probably have seen this already. Uh, that little bit is broken off. <laughs> so this, I spent a few years ago with, this is a core spinning technique where Inside of this is a cotton core and I have just used the little locks and just wrapped those around the core and I'll show you how to do that in a second. I think it's really nice to be able to create some different techniques rather than our, you know, we tend to have a standard go-to, don't we? Um, it's nice to be able to do something a bit different sometimes and this is quite a simple technique. The other, sorry, I keep pulling little bits out. <laughs> um, the other reason that it's really, really fun to do is that if you've got like this, a, a small amount of a very special fibre, it just helps that fibre to go a little bit further. It also adds more interest and more texture to it as well. Greatly, whether it's knitting, crochet, weaving, whatever. Um, and also I've used my locks, but they're not very obvious in this. And that's just the way that I've spun it. If you had some really, really obvious, gorgeous locks, you could actually spin those locks and actually retain the structure of those so you can actually see those little ringlets hanging out of it as well it'd be absolutely beautiful so without further ado let me show you how i've created this i'm just going to just turn the camera down so you can just see my wheel and be spinning there we go so all i've got here as my core i've got a reel of just this just ordinary um sewing thread popped it in on my lazy cake so that i can control it and I've created a little art bat, again, using up some leftovers out of my stash carrying on from last month. Um, and again, because I've only got a small amount of this, this is the only one I made, this technique is gonna be ideal. It's going to give me more length um, in my yarn. So project, will have, you know, I can do a slightly bigger project. It's gonna go that little bit further. So all we need to do is take our core thread, whatever that happens to be, it can be another wool, you know, another yarn, a commercial yarn, anything you want to use, have a go, experiment and play with it. And I tied that onto my leader, so it's effectively like a longer leader really. And all I'm going to do is, let me get started and I'll show you. <laughs> As I've joined, the, let me join that on for you to show you again. So if this was the beginning, I would hold the fibre here, just Pull back and allow that twist in and let it wrap around. Okay. Hold it out, pull it in. That's... Now the way that you do this, the, the type of yarn that you create depends on how you manage your fibre supply. So you can either pull it out quite finely, draft it quite finely and just almost just cover your core. You see how fine that is there. But again, it's taking it, you know, giving you more length, even better. But I rather like to pull it slightly thicker, so draft it more thickly and just allow it to go where it wants to go. Just creates a little bit more texture helps you to see all of those extra colours of this particular bat. But the one thing you will have to consider, obviously, is the wheel that you're spinning on and the size of the orifice here, because I couldn't make these textured areas too large, because obviously it needs to fit back through that orifice, doesn't it? But look at that, isn't that just so simple, so much fun, and you can just sit and just play with this. And again, I'm going to show you again, just doing very thinly, if that's what you prefer. So you have a nice, small, much more even type of yarn. Or let's go large. 
Now I'm planning, I think, I think on weaving again with this to get my little loom out and try another bit of weaving and see if I can improve on what I did last time as well. So let's have a look at what we've actually got on the bobbin. If I stop that going round, I bring that a little bit closer. Can you see how interesting that looks, doesn't it? And I'll talk to you again as well. And to finish it, I'm going to actually wind it onto my knitting noddy and steam it rather than taking it off and putting it into the water because I think that's going to help it to retain its structure a little bit more. Um, it's less messing about with it, less opportunity for a um, any accidents in the water. So that's what I'm going to do. So I am really looking forward to you having a go at this. I really want to see what techniques you try. It doesn't have to be this one. Try something else if you want to, okay? But this is quite simple to be starting with if you haven't done any art type yarns before and just such good fun. Okay, so enjoy. I'm looking forward to seeing everything that you've done and I shall be commenting on all your work. Lovely. Thank you for that and I will see you soon. Bye for now.